questions about a nuclear North Korea. And while the president will have plenty on his plate abroad, the trip comes at the end of a landmark week in the special counsel Robert Mueller's Russia investigation, including two indictments, one guilty plea, and plenty of questions about this 2016 campaign meeting when, according to court documents, a foreign policy advisor says he floated the idea of setting up a visit between then-candidate Trump and Russian President Vladimir Putin. We have a team of analysts standing by, but I want to begin with CNN White House reporter Jeremy Diamond, who is joining us by phone right now from Tokyo, where the president will arrive later this evening. Jeremy, first, just how crucial is this trip? Hi, Anna. Listen, there is no question at all that this is going to be a critical diplomatic swing for the president. Uh, first, of course, on the agenda is going to be addressing the North Korean crisis. The president uh, this week is going to be meeting with uh, the top leaders in the region who are most essential to this problem. Uh, he's first in Japan, and then he'll be uh, meeting with the South Korean leader as well as uh, the Chinese president, Xi Jinping. This comes all as uh, the National Security Advisor, H.R. Uh, McMaster, warns uh, that uh, the United States and, and the world really is, quote, running out of time when it comes to addressing the North Korean crisis. Uh, this crisis is, of course, uh, growing by the week, the risk of potential military confrontation. And this may be the president's best chance yet uh, to work with leaders in the region to uh, try and rally them around the common strategy. That, of course, is going to be difficult. We know that this is a president who has repeatedly undermined uh, his administration's strategy, whether it is undercutting his Secretary of State Rex Tillerson when he was trying to open communications uh, with North Korea, perhaps indirect communications. Uh, and so this is going to be the test for the president is whether he can present this kind of clear, coherent U.S. strategy when it comes to this rally U.S. allies uh, and, and kind of try and bring an end to this crisis, Anna. Now, on the Russia probe, Jeremy, the president has insisted he doesn't remember much about that meeting when campaign advisor George Papadopoulos mentioned the possibility of a meeting with Putin. But take a listen to how that compares to what he said last week. I don't remember much about that meeting. It was a very unimportant meeting. It took place a long time. Don't remember much about it. I'm a very intelligent person, one of the great memories of all time. So what else are we learning about that meeting? Yeah, that's right. It is interesting to hear the president say that uh, when, of course, he was saying, you know, just a couple days ago uh, that he does not really recall that meeting and that he characterized it as unimportant. Uh, you know, we were told by a source uh, who was uh, in the meeting that the president, uh, then candidate Donald Trump, didn't dismiss the idea out of hand of meeting with uh, President, uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin. Uh, the source said that he didn't say yes and he didn't say no. Uh, but, of course, this is uh, convenient for the White House to be able to say that the president doesn't recall that meeting. Uh, it seems that the president's memory uh, may be selective, or perhaps it was indeed one of these many, many meetings that he has uh, that he didn't quite recall as well. Jeremy Diamond in Tokyo, thank you for that reporting. Now, as the Mueller probe intensifies, President Trump is getting more aggressive with his criticism of the Justice Department, tweeting, People are angry. At some point, the Justice Department and the FBI must do what is right and proper. The American public deserves it. And then as the president prepared to leave for Asia, he also said this. I'm really not involved with the Justice Department. I'd like to let it run itself. But honestly, they should be looking at the Democrats. They should be looking at Podesta and all of that dishonesty. They should be looking at a lot of things. And a lot of people are disappointed in the Justice Department, including me. And here's the president in a radio interview earlier this week, seeming to lament his lack of control over the Justice Department. Well, the saddest thing is that because I'm the president of the United States, I am not supposed to be involved with the Justice Department. I'm not supposed to be involved with uh, the FBI. I'm not supposed to be doing the kind of things that I would love to be doing. And I'm very frustrated by it. I want to bring in our panel, CNN presidential historian Douglas Brinkley, former federal prosecutor Renata Mariotti, and writer for the Right Turn blog for the Washington Post, Jennifer Rubin. Doug, the president is upset he can't direct investigations by the Justice Department. What's your reaction to that? Well, um, Donald Trump seems very nervous. I mean, he's turning on his own Justice Department. It may not be an accident that on Friday uh, a Martin Luther King document got released where the FBI just looks terrible, like they were hounding Martin Luther King Jr. And now today's FBI, uh, where, where, uh, along with their old friend Mueller, is hounding him. This puts Jeff Sessions, I think, Attorney General, in a very weird